Now, charge is a conserved quantity. This means it can't be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one body to another. If we have a neutral object and we want it to become charged, then we need to add or remove charge from it. Now, theoretically, there's lots of different ways that we can do this, but in the world around us, generally objects become charged by either gaining or losing electrons. It makes sense that this is the case if we think about what atoms look like. Atoms have a nucleus which contain the positive protons and neutral neutrons, and they're surrounded by an electron cloud. As the electron cloud is around the outside, it's much easier to gain and lose the electrons from this cloud than it would be to overcome all the nuclear forces and remove a proton from the nucleus of an atom. Now, different atoms can lose and gain electrons with a different amount of ease. So this fundamentally comes down to Coulomb's law, which is F is equal to K Q1 Q2 on R squared. Now, if we have a really large nuclear charge, then we've got a really large Q in one of those terms. And so we need a lot more force to remove the electrons from that atom. Also, if the electrons are a long way on average from the nucleus compared to another atom, then the R is much larger and so the force required is smaller. So atoms with a larger electron cloud are easier to remove electrons from. Generally, if we've got a large electron cloud, we've also got some shielding from the inner electrons, which tend to um, block out through the law of superposition some of the force from the nucleus in the middle. So in chemistry, there's a term called electronegativity, which describes how tightly atoms hold on to their electrons. But the important point is some materials lose electrons easily, others um, gain them relatively easily, but there's a, there's a whole range. So if we use the frictional force, we can actually move electrons from one material to another. So for example, I've got a piece of fur here and a piece of PVC pipe here. Now, PVC pipe has a strong affinity for electrons, whereas fur tends to lose electrons relatively easily. So if I rub these two together, then I should generate a charge. So how we can see this is if I put this pipe onto this watch glass here so that it's free to spin. You can see the pipe now follows the fur around, indicating that there's an attractive force between these two because they have got opposite charges. In addition to this, if I charge up this second pipe here, these two pipes should now have the same charge. And so when I put them close to each other, you can see that they repel each other.